Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verb Noun. Okay, and here we are with the last part of my interview with Mike Rugnetta. If you haven't seen part one and two, check the links. They should be over here somewhere in this blank space. Uh, go ahead and click those and watch parts one and two, and then once you're done, come on back. We'll be waiting for you. Uh, if you've already seen parts one and two, not to fret, just go ahead and keep watching. Uh, for this part, it's gonna be a little bit different than the other two parts. In this, it's just gonna be basically Mike and me talking. Uh, I know I have mentioned before that, you know, I cut most of me talking out of the interviews, but for this last part, since y'all keep asking for it, I went ahead and kept it. Um, and I think there was some pretty good discussion that went on, so I hope you enjoy it. So, without further ado, go ahead and check it out, and here we go. Whoop! <laughs> Nerd. Uh, so this is a thing I've been thinking about the last couple days, so this might not be a a full thought that is going to be useful to you on video, but I'm going to say it anyways, and maybe I will say something useful in the process, which is, um, you know, uh, there are, there are certain, uh, we get lots of, I get lots of criticism. I get lots and lots and lots of criticism and it's not, I mean, it's not nearly the level of criticism that say Emily Grassley receives, you know, I'm not, my life is a cakewalk compared to what a female YouTuber goes through. Um, so a lot of the criticism I get is because I'm not a uh, like professional critic, and and that is actually I think one of the main messages of Idea Channel that I am an invested amateur using the ideas that he is familiar with, which are by far not the most in depth or current, um, but that this is the kind of work that anybody can do, and that you are repaid for the effort that you invest in trying to think critically about these things. Um, but that recently I have I have received uh, there have been a couple comments on videos from seemingly very very intelligent people people who are much much smarter than me and much more you know based upon their comments I would guess um, involved in pop culture criticism or you know critical theory critical analysis saying that uh, uh, Idea Channel lacks um, intellectual integrity uh, because we like I make use of theorists that have been unpacked and repacked a thousand times since their heyday. So like talking about Marx, talking about Benjamin, talking about Baudrillard, you know, these, these kinds of theorists that have been, they wrote their things and then a million people have said things about their things since then and it turns out that the reason they were so popular is because their understanding of the world was necessarily less complex than it is now because right the world has only become we're understanding more uncovering knowledge about things as we go and they were writing from a very privileged standpoint um, and that is a very fair argument and I encourage that person to make a video where they tell me that everything I have said is wrong but I take the charge of lacking intellectual integrity very seriously um, and I really I have been thinking a lot lately about that accusation about idea channel lacking intellectual integrity and it, it makes me real, like I take it really personally. I take it more personally than I, than I probably should. Um, because that I think is almost the kind of academic, like I don't know if this is the right phrase, but like academic almost gatekeeping that I want the show to fight against. To say that like you as a person, you have interests and you might come across theorists that you find interesting and you'll read a Baudrillard book because one of your friends said that it was good, or you'll read Walter Benjamin's Illuminations because you you took one aesthetics class in college, and you'll find that those ideas apply to the TV shows that you're watching, and you should be able to do that and experience a growth in understanding from that process, and not feel like you're doing something wrong because of it, because those ideas are not new, because they were written from a privileged perspective, which are, those are problems, right? We need to be we need to be careful about, you know, like I read um, Norbert, uh, not Norbert Wiener, um, Cybernetics. Um, cybernetics guy whose name I'm completely blanking on right now. I want to say Norbert, Norbert Wiener, but I don't know if that's, I, well, um, You can email it to me when yeah, you think of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I read, you know, like you read, you read cybernetics or like the human use of human beings and you're like, whoa, this was written by a white guy in the 50s. And, it, and his way that he thinks about the way the world works is very much inspired by that. And so we need to be careful about using those ideas that further those ideas about how the world works. But I, I, I'm really like struggling with this idea that 
the the application of 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 older theorists to newer popular culture is in some way lacking integrity. And it's funny because like uh, talking to this gal named Betty who lives up in Toronto, she has an art channel that she's starting up. Yeah. And she started her channel because she couldn't find a whole lot of stuff on art out there. And this was before Artist Art started. Art. Um, Idea Channel was originally a so Idea Channel Idea Channel went through three uh, iterations. It was originally supposed to be about audio, just about sound and sound culture because that's my background. And then it was an arts only show. It was it was just supposed to be about the art world and artworks, but from a popular culture perspective. Uh, and then it became about sort of pan culture. So there's a need for that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and one of the things that she kind of talked about. Oh, I don't care about my audio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that, like, if... I think it's great that people are out there and putting these things out, like, giving comments, like, yeah, you need to be more academically rig rigorous or whatever. Yeah. But then the impetus falls onto them. It's like, well, I'm doing this because somebody else isn't, is, I think, what a lot of people think. Yeah. Like, and it's just one of those things, like, acad academia and science are really great things, but they aren't always accessible to the public. Yeah. Because a lot of folks in science and academia don't know how to communicate like to communicate the latest and greatest thing and like with YouTube that's changing yeah uh, way awesomely but there are still many opportunities for other people that feel like your commenters feel to go and put themselves out put, there so this is um, someone a question that I get asked sometimes and a thing that I am sometimes a a uh, title that I am sometimes burdened with is more than once someone in a position of of you know like someone introducing me somewhere like I'm giving a talk or something has introduced me as the like the Neil deGrasse Tyson of cultural studies or like the Bill Nye of critical analysis and that is just the furthest thing from the truth that is not true for a thousand for a million reasons um, and a lot of people ask, like, oh, so do you, like, do you see yourself that way? Do you think that you're working towards it? And the answer is no, I'm definitely not. I'm not that level of um, expert. I'm not that level of communicator. I'm not that level of notoriety, clearly. Um, but one of the things that I hope for Idea Channel is that it, it might inspire the person who is that person. Because I want them to see what we're doing and think what Emily thinks, like this is just cultural criticism, I could do this, with an added dose of, and I could do it a thousand times better because I understand this world perfectly when this guy does not. Because I don't. You know, it's a premise of the shows that I don't. You watch me work through these things. Um, and so that's, like, that's a big, that's a big thing, you know, on the, on the topic of, you know, a lot of people make YouTube shows because someone isn't doing there's 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 a there's a market gap for lack for lack of a better phrase um that i hope i hope idea channel is dancing around the market gap of neil degrasse tyson of cultural criticism because we need that that's a thing that the world needs and it's stupid that we don't have it i did an anthropology of food oh class. yeah it was the best class ever i bet i'll send you the bibliography oh tonight. please it's do like 500 peer-reviewed articles all about food. Oh, the best. I asked. Uh, I asked a friend of mine is studying at um, NYU's Media, Culture, and Communications department now, and I was like, "Hey, do you know any food scientists or anthropologists, or better yet, historians? Because I'm really curious about the the history of processed food. Oh, okay. I want to know, like, when was the first time we looked at something we were like, that is processed food, and then what was the thing a hundred years before that that it predicted that was going to happen and where has it come since and she was she i found someone and she sent me an email and she was like okay you need to read this 500 page thing and i was like this is i don't have time for this but when i do this is so exciting <laughs> yeah just remind me because it is the best thing in the world uh my phd professor guy he did anthropology at uh Manoa. yeah and basically when he's not teaching even when he is teaching, because he does everything online, he just goes around the world eating food and finding papers, and he's compiled this like oh, 500 so article good. list of everything, and like I want to read that so bad. Oh, it's the best thing! Like I, I want that to be my next YouTube show. It should be. <laughs> you can you could write 
a video just on the Soviet sausage renaissance. Oh my god. That's I know. Amazing. See, I love, see, that's, see, that's the thing that, uh, that's one of the things I started Idea Channel, like, to kind of talk about, is to look at this, like, these little small bits of culture that you can point at and talk about and be like, isn't it crazy that this piece of minutia, you can talk about this for seven and a half minutes. Yeah. And you can, and you can get really excited about it in maybe a really nerdy way, but what better way of, to get excited is there? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had, it was the best class. I ended up writing a, an annotated bibliography on government policies around the world that people, the governments were making to help address uh, malnutrition or undernutrition. And there's so much stuff out there. Whoa. But then you just have the random things that were like the Soviet sausage renaissance or like soul food in, in, in Islam America. What? Yeah. Well, right. That makes perfect sense. Right. And that makes perfect about sense. It until you actually think about it. And it's yeah. like, oh, of course. Right. Oh, so that's really good. Yeah. Uh, I had a really good idea for another episode. Uh, this is sort of related uh, that I wanted to do, which is to to talk about the way that uh, like uh, like America has a very very good cocktail history, um, like the history of what cocktails have done and how they have progressed in culture um, and in like the the, the the inside the Venn diagram of food culture, um, and to talk about not necessarily the cocktails themselves what they come in and to put like a like a tumbler and a collins glass and a coupe and a wine glass and a beer glass and a champagne flute and be like which ones do the men drink and to have every be like oh shit <sighs> right because you know the answer to that yeah. and i've and i've been with friends who are they are forward thinking liberal you know privilege checking monoliths and they get something that's in an, that's served up, and they're like, "Ugh, I wanted the one in the big with the big ice cube in the in the round. What am I? What is this silly little thing?" And it's like, "Oh, that's okay, all right." And that like this is this is the degree to which we design for gender, right? This is this you know you you go out you go out to dinner, and I order the pint glass, and my girlfriend gets the the adorable flute with some with a mimosa in it, and they come in their appropriate glasses. There's no rule that says you have to put a mimosa in in that fancy, sleek, skinny-looking thing. There's no rule that says you have to put beer in it. You know, that's, the craft beer thing is changing that, that like you're, you know, you, you can, you, you know, you drink your Belgian ale out of something with a, with a scooped bottom. Um, but that, even that I think is, that tends towards the masculine because you are now sort of performing your, um, your, your level of taste, right? Which is a very sort of like, I, you know, I will, I, I, I'm a connoisseur of enjoying this kind of beer, which is a very, I think, masculine thing. Anyways, that's another another sort of you oh, know no. food, like like anthropology of food and consumption and yeah. yeah. And then you could think of like red solo cup. Right. <laughs> who who uses this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. All right, guys. So that wraps up my interview with Mike Rugnetta. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you did, leave a comment below. Also, uh, before we go, I have one more question for you guys. If you are a creative body, or even if you're not, uh, we're sticking with the same generational topic. Who do you hope to inspire and how, uh, whether it's through being creative, being educational, uh, teaching, or whatever, who do you hope gets something out of whatever you do? Do you have a target demographic, as it were? Let me know in the comments below, uh, or hit me up on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, the PBS Idea, IRC, why not? They might be a little confused, but that's okay. Uh, and let me know, because I want to know. All right, so that's all I got. Uh, until next time, thank you guys so much for caring. Um, and I will, uh, I'll see you guys later. All right, don't be a stranger. Bye.